Hey everybody, thanks so much for stopping by Marketing Trends. Super excited that you did. Today I dumped into a really cool conversation with Amy Frampton, marketing leader, head of marketing at Bamboo HR. We talked about some amazing things, but let's ask Amy. Amy, why should marketing leaders tune into this episode? Well, we talked about some great tips from a fast growing SaaS company and animal crackers. Cool, you heard it there, folks. Animal Crackers, how to build high-performing teams in a, in a fast-growing company like Bamboo HR. Check out this episode, I think you're gonna love it. Check it on Apple, Spotify, all the places you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Hey everybody, welcome back to Marketing Trends. This is your host, Jeremy Bergeron, Vice President of Media Strategy at Mission.org. And today I'm super excited and honored and excited to have Amy Frampton, Head of Marketing at Bamboo HR. Amy, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I'll, I'll try to live up to the excitement. I what, I what I know of based on the LinkedIn stalking is that mm -hmm. it seems like marketing started at Microsoft. Microsoft was kind of the, the early day marketing days for you was, was actually yeah, at Microsoft. I was, I was actually at an agency for five years before that. Okay. I should put that on LinkedIn. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I was curious where it started for you. Like, what yes. was the beginning? Yeah, so I was in uh, I was in politics. Okay. Um, I worked as a congressional aide for about four and a half years after college. I was a polit political science major, poli sci history, totally you know marketable. And then um, I went to a comms agency from there, and I worked at a comms agency for marketing comms for five years. And Microsoft was one of our clients. Oh. And then I got recruited to Microsoft from there. Ah, okay. So would you say yeah. that the marketing chops started prior to, to to Microsoft, or was it when you got there when you really started? Really started to know my staff. Well, if if I know my staff, I started it at Microsoft. Microsoft is is a great training ground for marketers. They do great marketing. They've got they understand how to reach customers. Um, they understand how to talk about products. They're just phenomenal. So That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, we've we've had some executives that have come have spent time there as well, and it's always interesting to hear the things that they learned and cultivated back then, and then the things yes. they carried over to their you know marketing leadership roles. Um, all great things. Like no one's ever said anything bad yeah. about their Microsoft experience. Yeah. No, it's 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 like a boot camp in a good way. Like you just learn every day, and it's it's awesome. So I yeah. loved my time at Microsoft. I also loved meeting Bradley, by the way. He is Yes, he's great. He's, man, he's an exceptional CEO. And yeah, I he host is. I host another show that we that we do here at Mission and, and most of that show is talking to CEOs and kind of co founders mm -hmm. in that world. And I get the chance to to meet some amazing executives. And they're all amazing in their own yeah. unique way. But every now and again, in my opinion, I get someone like a Bradley who is a great CEO and has this kind of X factor about him. And like I just mm -hmm. appreciated the journey he's been on to get there. And I'm, you know, you're heading marketing there. Is it, do you want to be called CMO or just head of marketing? I think is what LinkedIn said. Head of marketing is great. Okay. So you're head yeah. of marketing of the Bambooligan crowd. Of the Bambooligan it, crowd. Yes. It seems like now based on the, you know, co the conversation now with Bradley, I mean, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening there right now. I mean, it's like you guys are steady on the climb. Yeah. I have a buddy, I have a buddy that works there, Clint uh, Carby, who's a, an AE oh. there. Yeah, and that's how I first even got connected. He kept talking about Bamboo HR, and I was like, "Dude, what are they? What's going on at Bamboo HR?" Yeah, yeah. And so he emailed um, me. Now that I think about it, I hadn't yeah. thought of that before. Yeah, it was through Clint. Yep. Yeah, he's so, great, and it's uh, it's a great place to be. I, you know, I uh, I was at SmartSheet uh, running their product yeah. marketing team, and and I loved it at SmartSheet. I still love SmartSheet as a product and, and as a company. And, um, one of their founders reached out to me and said, Hey, we're looking for a head of marketing. What do you think? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, where I am. And the more and more we talked. And then once I met Brad, I only call him Bradley when he's in trouble. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> uh, once I met Brad and, and the rest of the team, I mean, it's just a phenomenal group of humans. The founders are amazing. Brad is a great CEO. He's been here just over two years. I've been here almost two years. He hired me a few months in mm -hmm. and it's, we're growing like, we're growing like crazy. Um, yeah, we just hit awesome. over a thousand people and we were at about 500 when I got here two years wow. ago. Yeah. Well, what's the, what, so what was your approach there kind of outside looking in, you know, you're, you've already have a, you have a look 15 plus years or so in marketing, right. In your career. Yeah. Yep. So look, you, 
you you understand the game. You've been in the game through the evolution of marketing, and which is really interesting because to me, to be a marketing leader in 2021, mm -hmm. 2022 is very different than being a marketing leader then. So For now sure. you have you have this cool experience. You've you've been at Microsoft. You've been at Smartsheets. You've had some some awesome wins. What did you kind of see from the marketing perspective at Bamboo? What are some of the early things you're establishing as you're taking in, as you're taking that role as head of marketing there? Sure, it's been really fun. Um, I think I'm the first marketing leader that has had all of marketing at Bamboo. So I have partner biz dev and product marketing and demand gen and brand and all the things you can think of. Plus, I have the SDRs, and so it's really nice to be able to look end to end. Bamboo has a history um, of doing really great brand work, really great storytelling, and it has a demand gen engine that can just crank like nobody's business. And so what I've been focused on is how do we bring those pieces together so that they work, the handoffs are better, the partnerships better, they're plussing each other's work versus kind of individual teams I see that there's an exponential raise that we can do um, when, when teams are connected um, more broadly. And they, and now, I mean, the, the team's great. I mean, I was lucky in that I got a really, a really great team that was already here, but they, you know, to see them connecting and plusing each other's work and, and really being able to go farther because of that has been really, really fun. How did you bring them all kind of bring them all into alignment? And what are some of the things you're doing as a leader to, to say, okay, there's an opportunity here to bring people in, connect even more as I guess, yeah. opposed to being in silos or not as being connected. And that's actually something I learned from Microsoft is, and from my time as chief of staff is we do a lot of cross team planning. And so rather than just saying, Hey, you know, partner team, think about partners and this team do this. It's, Hey, how do we think about partners interact across the customer journey that takes, you know, it takes more time, but it means we're more connected. Mm. And so I think by, really aligning to that customer journey, what the customer, what we're hearing from in terms of customer signal, um, people have been connecting in new ways and, and that's really exciting. And there's definitely more we can do. There's always more you can do there. But I, I learned at Microsoft really to, you know, they call them V teams there, virtual teams. But it basically means, hey, I don't mean not report to this person, but we're all gonna work on this project together. And um, having the teams reach out in that way has made a huge difference. The other thing I think I focused on is um, more customer voice in our marketing. Our customers love our product. When I was at Smartsheet, our customers loved our product so much. And I told myself I would never go any to any other technology company or any other company period where they didn't love it that much, wow. you know? And because it was so fun to work when the customers are so excited and so happy and they want to get involved. And so we have these, this customer community that was just waiting to be activated. And so I, I think we've, we've really focused there. You know, we started doing user groups. We're going to start doing them in person, which is exciting because um, we've done so much virtual over the last couple of years. And then more product voice. I have a strong product marketing background. That's what I did at Smartsheet. And so I do think across the org, we've started saying, how do we help people understand what our product can do for them in terms of, and it sounds kind of basic, but in terms of solving problems. You know, because it's as Bamboo started out as a brand 13 years ago, we were one of the first in the space. And, you know, it was kind of we were the, the friendly, helpful neighbor, um, the, you know, knowledgeable neighbor. And we still are that. But how do we add in these solutions that growing companies are looking for? How do we think about telling the story of how we make the complex simple for our customers and how what that empowers them to do in their job and how that empowers them to build the employee experience. And so, you know, that that's been really fun to work on with the team and to see them digging into it. And um, it's a great team. So I have a guy on my team who's been at Bamboo 10 years. Wow. This is, I know this is a segue, but 10 years, which in SaaS is like 400,000 years. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But not only that, he was an intern out of college and the first marketing hire at Bamboo 10 years ago. Whoa. And now he leads our brand storytelling and he's exceptionally talented. Wow. And I will, I will die on a hill to keep him for another 10. <laughs> wow. I mean, you always want to talk about someone who understands the, the customer yep. and understands the brand and, and, the, yep. and the shifts there. I still um, call him on the weekly, like, hey, what do you think about this? I've been here two years and wow. he's just so good. Yeah. That's talented fantastic. team. Talented team.
Well, I want to talk about team two because you you brought that up, and I want to kind of think of you know I want your perspective on on kind of building a high performance team and some of the things yeah. you think about when you join an organization. Before we go there, sure, because you also talked about this, which I think is awesome. Is you know you have this product marketing background as well. You're you know today we're about to wrap up 2021. You as the marketing leader, you're at this interesting intersection of like product and finance and operations mm -hmm. and certainly yeah. sales. It's it's for me, the marketing leader is one of the most interesting executive leadership roles. It's so unique because you have to align so well with with the yeah, CEO, the best but everyone ever. else. Yeah, it's, yeah, well, if you can get it right, because it's yeah. also yeah. it's also a gig where there's a lot of turnover. You'll see CMOs either they have a yes. good run or yeah. they're like, oh, they came for a little while and they're out. So, yeah. how do you? How, you've learned some things over the years. How do you, you know, insert yourself at this intersection? in a way that's supporting the, the, the leaders, but also the team, because you got to balance that really well and you're doing it. So I'm, what do you think about when you're thinking about aligning with the other stakeholders? Yeah, I appreciate that. I, um, you know, it's, there's some people will say, well, marketing and sales never get along or those sorts of things. I just don't think that's true. It's certainly not true at Bamboo HR. You know, we, we tell our leaders when they come in and actually everyone that comes into Bamboo seek first to understand. And so I spent a significant amount of time and I'm kind of a high bias for action sort of human. Like I like to get in and go and go, but I really tried to spend several months just listening because they the team was doing so much right already, you know, and I didn't want to mess it up. And I wanted to respect the fact that this had all been built. And then after a few months, then I was able to, start saying, hey, I, I can see that, you know, these two teams are working on similar things. And maybe if we did this both together and with this other perspective, maybe if we brought in some customer voice, maybe if we thought about how this related to our, our new personas and, and, you know, and ask questions, lots of questions, um, people then are, you know, able to kind of morph what they're doing. You know, we didn't have, I was lucky and then I didn't have any, um, you know, just stop sort of moments at Bamboo. Mm. It was more, hey, let's connect some dots. Let's think about some things that other companies are doing that we might utilize in terms of principles. And then let's work this through together. And so I am a big question ask asker. Okay. Um, any member of my team ever will tell you that. I ask tons of questions. Tell me why you say that. Tell me what you're thinking about. Um, and I think I probably learned that at Microsoft too, but I want to hear the thinking because only then can I help you know, move it forward. So I think in terms of the team, that's important. Um, we've also, you know, we've had a great team when we started. We've also added some great hires and bringing in those diverse perspectives is really important. And then across the executive team, you know, I, I think those relationships just as important or just as, um, as a high priority for me as my own team, because they're both really my teams and we call it team one, you know, we've, as, as lots of people do. And, you know, that those team one relationships, we talk, you know, we talk all the time. And so I think understanding where we can better as a marketing organization serve sales, where we can better as a marketing organization serve product, serve ops, you know, and versus we're just going big with all this stuff that doesn't connect. I mean, that's, that's the place that I see marketing leaders fall is they'll go too big too fast. And they haven't done the listening and they don't maybe understand the product as much, or they don't understand what it actually does. And I'm a total nerd for knowing what the product does um, or how the sales cycles work. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, what are you doing? This doesn't even make sense. Like it's pretty, but it doesn't make sense. And so I, I think that's key in terms of, of listening to your coworkers as well. Mm. You said, you said the word that, you know, not every great human being says when I ask them about the, the one skill they've cultivated in mm. their in their career, and and there's been some great ones. You, uh, Kevin Warren, the CMO of UPS. There's been some mm. really, mm -hmm. and they say that they're like listening is really mm -hmm. huge, and uh, that's also something that not everyone says. And I think it's fascinating to see, to hear that you actually took that time. It also makes sense. Here's another ingredient in yeah. Amy Frampton's you know toolkit of like, wait, I'm gonna actually before I come in with all these big strategy and you know, because also Bamboo HR is it's local and global, right? You guys are selling yep. all over. Yep. So I want to get into that. And so, but for you to just, you've cultivated this thing, this idea of, okay, 
really listening, listening to yeah. the leadership, listening to your team, listening to the customers and really evaluating that. And I think that's so key. That never gets old. That never gets old. It doesn't. And it's interesting because as marketers and probably just as people in tech generally in lots of, of industries, we're often rewarded for getting it done, right? And so not necessarily rewarded for listening, it, that be, but it becomes, it's important at every level that you work at, but it's the most important when you're running an organization. And I had someone say to me, as I started to take on management roles, a mentor of mine, he said, um, what's interesting is as you move up the ladder, whatever you want to call it, you actually start to know less, but you have to make more decisions faster. <laughs> and that's totally true, right? And so anytime that you can listen and, and understand, you can make better decisions. But we're not really rewarded for that. I mean, if you think about individual contributor on a brand team or something, you're, you're rewarded for getting that stuff into market, right? And so it is something you have to coach yourself to do, I think. Mm. So let's shift into the team or not the team, but, you know, locally and globally, you know, is it, yep. is it, is it kind of decentralized marketing operations where you have folks marketing in other countries or is it all centralized? How do you kind of approach the local global? You sure. Know? We have everyone in the U S right now. Um, but we have really expanded, you know, we're a, a Utah based company, um, nestled in the mountains. Like, they're, like I, we were talking before the podcast couldn't be a prettier place to be. Um, and we've started over the last few years, uh, hiring across states. And, and so we've got more time zone coverage, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and especially with my SDRs, I think, you know, 25% of our new hires are out of state. And so we don't have a London office right now, et cetera. We do a lot of that through partners. Um, and then we do a lot of that by making sure that our support hours and other hours overlap in some ways, because we really are across the globe every time zone. And so we, we try to make sure that we're available. Mm -hmm. So we're expanding, you know, and it's, it's fun because you get people that come in from, from other places that have other experiences and other perspectives. And that just makes us better. Our customers are from everywhere. So mm -hmm. why shouldn't our team be right? What about just like marketing languaging when it comes oh, yes. to other, other languages, right? Like just what's your approach and cause you're serving people all over the world. You're solving problems yeah. for business owners all over. Um, yeah. What's your approach in kind of how do you, how do you market both locally and globally? Sure. So um, we do market in a breadth motion across the world in um, English based. Okay. So we don't do a lot of localization. We've got localization within the product, but what we haven't gone to yet is, you know, here are the data sheets for Belgium. Here are the mm -hmm, data sheets mm -hmm. for Japan. Um, we haven't done that yet. Um, some of our partners do that with us. Um, and then we have a number of um, uh, diverse language speakers that do that on our support team, our sales team, et cetera. Okay. So that someone can be implemented and they can have some of those services. Um, but what we haven't gone to yet is in field out of the US, in field offices, or um, marketing materials. That's just not something we've needed to do yet. We okay. do that through our partners primarily. Okay. Are there kind of more innovative things you're testing, trying when it comes to like, local or global in terms of just marketing? I know AI, ML is a big one and there's a lot of things that we're hearing about, but are you are you testing things, yeah. trying things? Yeah, we are. There's a couple of things. Um, first of all is in product. And I know this isn't marketing, but we're looking at how do we think about nudges? Employee experience is the ultimate goal of those that use bamboo, right? Like my company's growing super fast. I need, I need a great employee experience. We know there's the great resignation going on, but we also just want a great employee experience, better for our teams, better for our customers. So we're looking at um, AI nudges right now within Slack and in other places where we can say things like, hey, did you know, you know, um, so-and-so hasn't had a raise in a year. You might want to look at that or hasn't taken time off. Or, hey, I saw you just got a raise. You might want to look at your 401k contributions and just kind of automating some of those nudges so that people can, it gets easier and easier to make those connections. Mm -hmm. And that's something in product that we're doing. And, you know, worldwide in terms of marketing, and I know I said partners earlier, but it's really true. Our partnerships are super important. Here's a great example. Our HR users, they want a platform, which is what, you know, as Bamboo, they want Bamboo HR to be a platform. They can do everything they need to do. Right now, our payroll is US only. 
So we've got great partners in Canada. We've got great partners in the UK. It's on and on and on where they then can use this through our marketplace. We've got a hundred partners in our marketplace through our API and they can basically build a custom platform for their country. And so one of the things as we look to next year is how do we reach out and make sure that our potential customers and our current customers understand how everything can connect mm. and they can have a great experience that way. Mm. And um, because we have, you know, we've got a sol- super solid marketplace, really one of the best I've seen with a hundred partnerships um, but what we haven't done, in my opinion, well enough is tell the story of what that offers to our worldwide audience. So I'm excited to to take that on in 2022. Wow. What's what's something that maybe over the years or it may be new, maybe old, but something that you believe in strongly as a marketing leader that maybe some of your marketing friends or executives would disagree with you on? <laughs> oh, that's a fun one. I I think I lean in harder on my marketing team understanding the product more than a lot of marketers. Mm, okay. um, product marketing leaders always think everyone should know the product, but in terms of like, I want my demand gen folks to understand the product. I want them to be speaking about it in super authentic ways. And um, that product knowledge is something that it's, it's kind of easy to just move, you know, in SaaS circles and maybe not always know, but, and I mentioned Microsoft earlier, I learned at Microsoft, like you have to understand how this stuff works to do good marketing. And I do think sometimes people up level it too far. Mm. So that's something that's, that's super important to me. The other thing that we do that's a little bit unique is we have the SDRs report into me. I want to so, ask you about that too. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, they love being in marketing and it's fun because a lot of them, you know, SDR is not an entry level job, but it is a, a job earlier in career. And for a lot of folks, and um, I, I think, I hope um, we've hired a bunch of them in marketing to move from SDR to marketing. I think they, they like that. And so you can talk about how does that messaging, what did the customer hear before they get the SDR call? How do we have the right conversation? How do we connect? Those sorts of things are, are really, really important to me. And, and we love having the SDRs as a part of marketing. I love that. I think, you know, we something I, I will talk about and ask marketing leaders on this show is the whole sales marketing alignment, yep. right? I mean, yep. it's the age old thing. We always hear about it. Marketing, sales, they hate each other. They love each other. Depends on who you ask, when you ask. Yeah. You know, and, and, and yep. you know, you've got this really interesting, you know, another curveball of like SDRs are rolling up to the marketing leader which I think is, yeah. is absolutely brilliant. It brings it brings that alignment like front and center. Um, and it's so beautiful that they're getting that exposure into the marketing world as well. So they're they're into the customer voice, they understand it, and they're also getting this really solid, you know, marketing experience. And that's and valuable. They talk to the customers every stinking day, right? And so one thing I did at a past job at Smartsheet was I had a whiteboard I put outside my office. This is when we all get to see each other in person all the time. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> and I need to, I said, I want everyone to talk to a customer at least once a week. Um, in marketing. And I want you to put the customer and the date on the board so we could start to see the momentum, you know? And SDRs are on the phone with customers every day. I mean, who better to know what questions are being asked, what solutions are needed, what pain points are needed than the SDRs so they can loop that back. So we're running all of these super fun tests with our with our SDRs in terms of a more outbound motion because we're a primarily inbound business in terms of working with customers and helping them understand both the marketplace and additional product offerings that we have. Um, the SDRs were testing all these things because we're so close mm-hmm. that we can say, you know, Hey, does one of you want to come run with this new ebook we're going to do? Hey, was one, you know, and, and the connection is so tight. And when I got here, the SDRs reported into our CEO. <clears throat> so we had sales SDRs and marketing. And after a few months, both the sales leader and I said, feels like they should work for one of us. And the sales leader agreed with me, they should go to marketing. And I'm so wow. grateful for his like lack of territoriality, if that's a word. Sure, sure. Like he wasn't worried about his numbers. He was just yeah. more like, what, what would work? And I think, I think this would work. And it's been great. Wow, that's cool. So were you yeah. were you doing that at Smartsheet? Like was that the nope. kind of- Oh. This is my first time having SDRs. I've never seen it. Yeah, I haven't Ever. seen it like this. And okay. I love it. In fact, we're totally doing an old school pizza party for everyone in town with the SDRs on Friday. Like, you know, um, buckets of drinks, not buckets, oh. uh, pitchers. Thank you. Buckets of drinks would be weird. 
lots of pizza. We're doing one for the, um, for the folks out of state too, virtually. Um, but I love it. I love talking to the SDRs. They know the customers so well, they're wicked smart. Mm. We have so much fun. You come down, to- come up for pizza. You come up on Friday. Hey, okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's, it's funny. We actually were, uh, Stephanie and I, uh, CEO of the business of mission. We were thinking about going to park city or Breckenridge. We actually chose Breckenridge. We were close to doing park, park city this year. Uh, yeah. We just couldn't find, we tried book too late. Couldn't find like the right kind of, they were next already, time you ping me. I'll hook spot. you up. I'll okay. Hook you up. okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so in terms of demand, Jen, you talked about this, you know, mm-hmm. you're, what are some of the things that you high level ingredients you're, you're, you're putting into the demand gen pot? So you have the really, I know we're cultivating this and building something new here as we're growing mm-hmm. that different size and scale. But when you think about demand gen now and what you need to have in place to have a successful demand gen engine, what do you, what do you think about? Sure. And we've shifted a bunch in demand gen. The demand gen team we have is excellent, super talented. We've had for 13 years, uh, what I would call a breadth demand gen engine. It's not super personalized other than to our target audience, you know, and who we're trying to reach, but it's, it wasn't personalized. It was, you know, broad SEO, broad buys, and they brought in amazing business for us. So it's, it's not a complaint as much as we continue to grow and we're growing at this rate where We've, we've now added in, and it's been, I think, eight weeks, we've had people on this, a much more targeted motion as well, whether it's by more specific persona, whether it's by um, audience uh, vertical, role in vertical, growing business type, like if you're growing really fast in tech. And just, you know, one of the interesting things for me is, we, you know, we're an SMB focused company. We're not looking to go up market to enterprise we focus on SMB and we love SMB and growing businesses. And so, you know, in, in enterprise, I would have done ABM, you know, and, and that's a standard play. ABM doesn't really work as well in SMB, but we certainly have the opportunity to know our customers even better and pain points based on where they are in the country, what their industry is, what their role is at a like triple click. My boss, Brad, always says, it's not, there's no such thing as a triple click. I'm like, yes, there is. In marketing, there is. And so as we get to know them better and better and are doing smaller, so less reach, but more targeted campaigns, uh, that's the direction that we're moving in. We'll keep doing the breadth, but really getting in there and, and partnering with these customers and what they need, that's a huge opportunity for us. So are you categorizing SMBs with revenue or, or seats? Seats, yeah. So it's we a thousand, just, thousand or less or? Yes, yep. Okay. That's exactly right. Yep. That's exactly right. And and that is our key focus. Like we build for that. And so, you know, a lot of things that we do are different than maybe someone who's building for enterprise because we know those folks so well. Now, even, even the thousand or less can be a a, a big range of companies. Like, you know, we have, you know, 15 people full-time, 20 contractors, right. And there's Mm -hmm. lots of sizes in between us and a thousand. For sure. Are you seeing some sweet spots within the thousand below? Like, is it, Hey, 500 and above, this is where we really bastering it. Is it all over the, all over the board? In terms of yeah. The- we the- often say that we end up using employee count as a translator for complexity. And that is true. Sometimes that works most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. And so sometimes we have to say, actually this much smaller company, you know, we fit them really, really well, even though they've got 15 people, I mean, we certainly can do that, but, or we can do something much larger um, uh, because of of the construct that we offer. So, you know, our goal for all of these folks is to take the complex and make it simple. And so, um, you know, that space in the mid, you know, 300, 400, 500 is really, really good for us. Certainly have customers bigger than that, even bigger than a thousand. Um, But that multiple hundred spaces is, is, is a good sweet spot. Okay. Okay. And you said complexity as in like at that level, their business tends to be, have some complexity to it. Is that yeah, what you mean business by, okay. gets, Yeah. Business, you know, it gets more layered. You have more offices, you yeah, have yeah. more States involved. You're thinking about payroll across multiple States versus in one and your tax policy, you're onboarding people that maybe don't live where your home offices as things get bigger. We just use it as a, 
as an indicator, a preliminary indicator of complexity. And so we, we look at that, that size. Mm, that's great. And I also, I, I talked, I spoke to, to Brad about this as well, was just mm -hmm. like to be able to keep things simple as you scale an organization, mm -hmm. right? Because yep. I've noticed in some of these, we had some huge brands on our shows and also medium, we all sizes, but mm -hmm. it's interesting to see even some of the massive brands that we have on how they've kept things simple, how simplicity right. seems to scale things. You know, it so, does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just did some research that came back and it talked to our, to this audience size up to a thousand and every single one of them said ease of use was their number one reason for picking a software. This was unprompted, unaided, you know, survey ease of use. And so, and that's really where we excel at Bamboo. And so to be able to tell that story in that space as people grow is exceptional and super mm -hmm. fun. I love it. What are, what are, what are some of the things you do to kind of get in the nitty gritty of understanding the persona within the zero to a thousand? Because there's different industries, they're serving different people. Again, it's a big bucket. How, how, how like custom and personalized are you getting when you're connecting and telling stories to these people across mm -hmm. these vast in industries? Yeah, it's interesting because right now we're, we're testing, you know, in vertical uh, industry, we're testing um, some persona work we've been doing and we're testing in geo. And, you know, with all of those things, you can get a lot of mixes. You know, if you're an HR admin or an ops person in Florida, in construction, you know, it looks like it's one of those, you know, Rubik's Cube sort of questions. But, but what we find is that it's pretty consistent in terms of the problems that they need to solve. People are thinking about how do I onboard and how do I make sure that, so we know data-wise, just to back up, we know that if the onboarding experience isn't right, you lose um, huge numbers of people, you know, and I think it's, it's a five X sort of thing where if you onboard, you just lose them in the first six months. Hmm. And so, you know, there's research about what onboarding does. So everyone's worried about onboarding. Now folks who are in construction or retail may be worried about onboarding remotely and on site versus in a home office, but they're still worried about onboarding. Right. And so that's how we break it down into these, like, what are they most worried about? They're worried about their culture. They're worried about their experience and people being connected. Um, they're worried about things that are just mandatory to get right, like making sure people get their time off and making sure they get paid well. And all those things are pretty consistent. And then you, if you layer in the industry, you can know, like I said, like construction, which is one of our big industries, um, we do very well there. You know, well, they're worried about people who are being onboarded, not in an office. Mm. And so then we can we can get into the nuance there. And, and how does that make a difference? Okay. So you kind of break it down from the big themes that, you know, and then apply those to, to industries which are really, really different. And of course, tech is another industry that we do well in. I think our user interface is so pretty and the product works in a frictionless way. And so tech folks like it because it's it works, you know, so well. And um you know, they used to be in office, but heck now they're all remote too. So how do you do that? Right. And, and how do you onboard the right amount of people and everyone's growing so fast. So in, in terms of marketing mix and the things that you're just, you know, you're doing, I mean, are you doing any direct mail, like traditional things that are we do. Not a lot of folks are doing? Okay. Yeah. So we do direct mail, but we've tested some things. We tested our way into it um, and, and changed it. We now mostly use direct mail with current customers to let them know about additional services that they might, okay. might be helpful to them. Okay. So it's much more targeted. Okay. We don't blanket a zip code or blanket, a, you know, it's more, Hey, you know, you're using us. Did you know that you could also do all your time tracking with us or performance or payroll, whatever the, you know, and, and it seems like, in what you're doing, if that could be helpful. And so it's much, much more targeted. We've stopped doing direct mail as a blanket about 12 months ago. Okay. Okay. Um, what about like some newer things like TikTok and, you know, some of these other channels that uh, I'm sure. noticing some brands are kind of, they're, they're either at the table playing a little bit or yeah. testing it. Um, yeah. I'm curious your thoughts on that. We don't do TikTok right now. We do Insta, okay. Um, okay. you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, kind of all this Twitter, all the standards. And then I, and then Instagram, we certainly do. And we do a lot of storytelling okay. on Instagram employees because we use the product ourselves. So we can talk a lot about what it does for us and how excited we are to, to have those. We do a, a lot of day in the life of stuff. We do industry targeting and in Instagram. We haven't tried TikTok. We also just launched a podcast. 
um, and got great results with that this year, the era, which is Brad, and we're going to have some fun with that next year. So those are, those are the pieces. And it's, you know, it's, I think all of us as marketers are thinking about how does COVID and the work from home reality for so many of us, some people can't work from home Mm -hmm. and that's certainly a reality too, but things have really changed. Right. And so when you do things like a direct mail, you know, when you do things, you know, what address do you send it to? You know, (laughs) it's like, you send them to the offices and they sit there until six months later when, you know, somebody throws them out. So you don't want to do that. So that's an important thing. Podcasts. I used to think of this podcast as a driving to the work channel, you know, to work channel and, mm-hmm. and not as many people drive to work every day. And so, you know, you have to think about what little nuggets can you give people during their day um, to allow them to engage with your brand um, without assuming that they're doing all the things they used to do. Right. You know, like right now, I personally, I love a shorter podcast because I'm not driving to work. I used to drive an hour and 15 in Seattle each way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I had the podcast circuit down, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But I do like those little um, nibbles of things, you know, and I think that's important too. Mm, I love that. What, from a MarTech perspective, what tools or, or products are you kind of most excited about that are kind of really aiding your marketing efforts? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an Adobe stack fan. Okay. And Brad didn't pay me to say that. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> Shout out to Adobe. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I've, I've been an Adobe uh, fan for years and I just think they're the best practice in, in marketing suites, you know, and certainly there's lots of individual tools that are great. Um, but if you're looking at a, at a suite of tools, you know, from my creatives, cause I've got creative team in house to, um, to Marketo and AEM and all of those things. I'm a huge, huge fan of those things. But then we also were trying out some new things. We're trying a product called Sasquatch and they're a much smaller company, but they help with customer referrals. So mm, one of the things we realized is we had customers literally reaching out to us. How do I refer someone? And we thought, okay, we got to figure out how to make this easy and fast <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that's like, you want to get that call all day, every day, except Heck you want yeah. to be easier. And so Sasquatch does that for people. And, and we've just implemented that. We really like Sasquatch cool. and we're finding some, some great results there. So talk about two different ends of the spectrum in terms of size. I think Sasquatch has 30 or 40 people total there, but, um, but we're looking and, and talking to Adobe about what's next in their, um, in their stacks and, and yeah. how we might be able to play there a little bit early. Um, and we're excited about that there. Um, they've been a great partner to us. That's great. I love that. Cool. Um, okay. We're coming up on a little bit of time. Is there, I want to get into the lightning round, which is kind of a fun, fun. Okay. Part of this. Bring but it before, before we do that, is there okay. anything, cause I know you've done a lot of, a lot of podcasts, you've done a lot of shows. <laughs> this is just one of yeah. many. Is there anything that you wished like was asked more often that you want to talk about? I, you know, I get asked a lot about careers in marketing and, um, the older you get, the more you get asked about how to have a career (laughs) in whatever you're doing, I think. Um, but what I found as a marketing leader is that I love that people will say, do I need to do this thing in the specific order, you know, and you certainly can, but I found that I've done most of what my team does. I've done it sometime. Now I've never been a creative that I need to say for sure. But in terms of kind of the typical marketing jobs, I've been able to run an event and do a thing. And, and I think trying all the things to see what you like the most is so helpful. And it also helps you lead a team later because if my team calls and says, you know, this isn't working or this thing with ops is broken, or how do we get people to our event? Like I've done it. And, and so I think zigzagging a little bit, I'm a big fan of the zigzag. Mm. Let's just say that, like, you don't only have to do one thing in marketing and you can do things out. I've done things outside of marketing and that helps me too. I love, so that's awesome. I'm just that's a great. fan of people exploring and trying is what I'm trying to say. Not very well, but I just think, you know, all those experiences add up and it's a wonderful thing. Oh, that's great. Okay. Let's get in the lightning round. So we're going okay. to light. We'll do the lightning round. I'm going to do a little Salesforce read, and then we're jumping to the questions. And then at the end of these questions, I'm going to do the intro, and I'm going to say, "Hey, everybody!" And so you just basically. And I'm going to say, "Glad to be here." And you're going to say, "Glad yeah. to be here, Jeremy." Mm-hmm. That's all you got to yeah. do. Okay. Okay. All right. I can do that. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, Marketing Trends Podcast is brought to you by Salesforce. 
We bring marketing and engagement together. Learn more at salesforce.com forward slash marketing. We've got Amy Frampton, head of marketing at Bamboo HR. Lightning round, Amy, first question. Texting or talking? Texting. Me too. Uh, second question, what do you love and appreciate about yourself? Oh gosh, experience. I love and appreciate my experiences. Mm. Favorite day of the week? Thursday. It's Friday Eve. Oh, nice. Yeah. Choice. Okay. Is favorite, a good one. I think I know your answer to this one, but I might not. Let's see. Favorite okay. city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? Duval. Duval. Nobody's going to know where that is. It's I outside know. of Seattle, but man, okay. do I love it. <laughs> little secret. Duval. Okay. Um, last film you saw in the theater? Oh, in the theater. Like actual with a seat? Yeah. Black Widow. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Oh. Okay, that's the hardest one you've asked me. <laughs> um, shoot, I gotta choose humans over animals just because what weirdo would pick animals, but okay. if my cat, if I could know what my cat was thinking most of the time, I'd be really happy. Okay. So I'm gonna okay. say languages. That was a really bad okay. non-answer, languages. Okay, okay. Uh, favorite holiday? Oh, Halloween. Okay. Favorite live concert? That I've been to? Mm-hmm. Can I get name two? Sure. Okay. Bee Gees in 1981 with my dad. I was eight. Wow. Wow. And recently, Foo Fighters at the Gorge. Fabulous. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Two fantastic, two, two great <laughs> ones. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, mm -hmm. how good of a driver are you? Oh, I'm a 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fill in the bank, blank. Something wise my elders taught me was? Gifts are not a tax. Mm. My mom used to say, we didn't like our gifts from grandparents or whatever. This is not a tax. This is a gift. I love that. We're thankful for every gift. Invisibility or super strength? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, invisibility. Okay. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? No, but that's, okay. that's a hard one. That's a little judgy. That's a little judgy, <laughs> Jeremy. Just a little bit, just a little bit. A little bit. judgy. Um, if you weren't in marketing, what would you be doing? I would be doing, gosh, I can't imagine a life where I'm not in marketing. I've always wanted to be a librarian, so I'll say librarian. A baller librarian at that. I can just see. <laughs> um, okay, last question. What would you go back and tell your younger self about being a marketing leader? Don't worry so much. That's just what I tell myself, period. It's marketing, have fun, work hard, look at the data, smile.